Thank you for coming uh, tonight, enduring this uh, fierce weather outside. We appreciate uh, your attending uh, the speaker program with the Council on World Affairs. Uh, my name is Wael Khoury. I'm chairing the board this period of uh, time. And I welcome you on behalf of the Council, the board, and the members uh, to uh, our speaker's program. Uh, the Council, uh, for those of you, I'm, I'm very delighted today to see a lot of new faces and we love to see you in uh, more programs, you'll enjoy it, guaranteed. Uh, this is a 90 years old organization in Cleveland. Uh, it has great traditions as part of one of the major civic organizations in the city. We uh, carry uh, speakers' programs every year. We get about eight to 10 very distinguished speakers discussing international topics. And most of the time, we try to make it on a timely basis. So the population will get to get in touch with experts in the field. And uh, this season, we had great series. Uh, we had Mr. Tom Pickering, one of the most senior diplomats in, uh, in Washington, speaking about issues related to Iran. Jessica Matthews uh, came from the uh, Carnegie Endowment for Peace. We had Stephen uh, uh, Clemens from The Atlantic, uh, Editor-in-Chief. We had uh, the pleasure of having excellent speakers. And today we're very delighted to have Professor Michael Hudson with a very distinguished uh, scholarly academic career uh, addressing uh, the hot topic of, of, of our times now, uh, the situation in the Middle East. So you will get to uh, hear his uh, opinion and uh, expertise. We also uh, have a program coming. Uh, it's in your uh, flyer uh, on March 4th about Korea. It's going to be a panel discussion, very stimulating, and we encourage you to attend as well. We have a, a subcommittee of the Council, uh, the Cleveland Committee on Foreign Relations, also hosting uh, off-record speakers. And uh, if any of you is interested in joining, please let me know. We also uh, run the Model UN. Our main focus, actually, is education, and speaker program is one of that. And then Model UN, I'm sure many of your family members uh, uh, participated in Model UN activities. It is administered and run by the Council on World Affairs for many years in a very distinguished manner. <clears throat> we also uh, have an international visitor program every year. This is a program that's sponsored by the U.S. State Department. Uh, they host uh, guests from all over the world in different uh, fields. It ranges from physicians to nurses to engineers to environmentalists to administrators to parliamentarians. Uh, and they come to the United States and they tour several cities. And uh, Cleveland has been one of the flagship cities, actually, uh, thanks to the effort of the office and the staff uh, running the program. We get about 200, 250 people coming every year and they, we connect them with their counterparts in the U.S., in Cleveland. And uh, the best part is we love to host them in families' uh, homes for dinners and other activities. So you will have a chance to host uh, some of these uh, uh, delegates. And just as a reminder, the current president of China was in that program maybe 35 years ago. And the same as Margaret Thatcher came through the program. So these are the leaders of the new, uh, you know, in, in the future of their countries. I'm very delighted also to introduce uh, our president, our distinguished uh, president, uh, Ambassador Heather Hodges. Uh, we've been uh, delighted uh, to uh, to uh, recruit her as the president of the council. Very active, very uh, active in recruiting uh, great speakers uh, to the city. She is Clevelander, and uh, she finished a very distinguished uh, diplomatic career. Uh, finally, i like to recognize today um, a, the Free Clinic of Cleveland. Uh, for those of you who don't know the Free Clinic, which I doubt because it's a, one of the landmarks in Cleveland, actually, civic services. 
Uh, it's a free medical clinic for the needy that's been in the city for many, many years. And uh, they offer their services uh, uh, to, to uh, anybody who knocks on their door. And you hold great standing among the medical community. So I have to congratulate you, beside being supportive of the council. The free clinic has been a very supporter of the council for many years. All these delegates, or many of the delegates that relate to medicine or nursing in some way, uh, they go to the free clinic and they have very uh, productive interaction. Level. So again, thank you for your support, and I would like to invite you to say a few words. Mr. Mr. Danny Williams. Thank you very much. Mr. Danny Williams, the executive director of the free medical clinic. Good evening. Uh, I want to thank you for this invitation. Um, you know, it was nice to reconnect with a few old friends and colleagues who've been involved with the free clinic and other organizations around town. I, I am um, pleased that we've been offered the opportunity to be a partner with the Council of World Affairs. This has been um, a great partnership. I was asked to think about why the free clinic would do this. And it takes me back to my time with the American Cancer Society when I was able to go with a small cohort, um, I think funded by the American International Health Alliance. I'm not sure I'm getting the, the name correct, but uh, a few of us went over to Slovakia in the mid-90s. It was just after the fall of communism, and they were looking for advice and counsel about how to develop the NGO, growing NGO uh, initiative at the time, and how to uh, utilize volunteerism in a way that would help in, in healthcare. And so when we were offered the uh, chance to host delegations through this organization, it was a natural for me to say yes. When I think about what we benefit from in that interaction, there are really two, two key things. One is, I think about our staff and our more than 500 volunteers. We come from a broad range of ethnicities and backgrounds and, and languages, which benefit us as we deal with the diverse patient population that comes to our doors. But the, probably the, the bigger thing is we've come to realize that there are many countries around the world who we can learn from, where, where the health outcomes are, are superior with uh, less resources. And so there are lessons there that we can learn, we, uh, we can learn from. And, and so the, there's a certain amount of humility that uh, hosting you know, our, our friends from other countries helps us uh, to, to keep in mind. Uh, and, and the uh, friendships that we develop, the lessons we learn, I, I think these are things that are, are, are really important for us. So we're, we're grateful for this opportunity to be partners with you. Uh, we, we look forward to continued work with you in the, in the years to come and, uh, and to the lessons we'll learn in the future. So thank you very much for this recognition. I appreciate it. thank uh, our executive director and uh, to get you to meet her, uh, Mora. Uh, she's uh, in the back. She's uh, uh, in charge of the office, the executive director, and she's doing a great job with the rest of the staff. Uh, thank you. And I wish you can join and become members. Thank you. I'm Heather Hodges. I'm the um, President and Ambassador in Residence at the Cleveland Council on World, World Affairs. Uh, normally, I am the person who introduces our speakers. However, this evening we have a special opportunity of having someone introduce Dr. Hudson who knows him and who has worked for him. Um, we have with us Rana Khoury, who happens to be the daughter of Dr. Wilde Khoury. But beyond that, she has been the personal or the research assistant and personal assistant of uh, Dr. Hudson. So we decided we'd uh, change the routine, and so I am going to have uh, Rana introduce her boss. I'm so glad you could all be here tonight. Um, certainly there are many people in this room much more qualified and distinguished than myself. But as Ambassador Hodges has indicated, I have known Dr. Hudson for about four and a half years. Um, but before I knew him personally, I was, had already encountered his work. Uh, what distinguishes Dr. Hudson is two things. Um, his work as an academic and his work as an administrator. 
So my first encounter was his work, was his uh, books and his articles. So I'll start there. Um, he did his PhD at Yale University and has since distinguished himself in the field of political science by bringing the Arab perspective and the Middle Eastern perspective that is especially then but continues to be lacking in the field. Uh, Dr. Hudson spent time in the region, he learned the language, and, and he really came to understand the region in a way that could be translated to the, to the language of political science. And he has uh, authored and edited six books and written countless articles and, and book reviews and is regularly appears um, in, in the news media. And I urge you to check out michaelchudson.com. I had a little bit of a hand in putting that site together. And if you also want a deeper look, uh, his Wikipedia page was put together quite well by <laughs> somebody I know. And, and so I urge you to look at that. But his contributions were especially in his book, Arab Politics, The Search for Legitimacy. And his lecture tonight is going to continue on that theme. Dr. Hudson's work as an administrator is also where I encountered him when I began my master's program at Georgetown University at the Center for Contemporary Arab Studies which Dr. Hudson was one of the founders of the center in the 1970s and directed it on and off since then. He, the center has become one of the premier institutes for the study of the Middle East. It is distinguished not just in Washington, where it has a strong voice, but around the country and the world. And in one corner of the world, they heard of him over in Singapore. And the, the Middle East Institute uh, recruited him to be the first full-time director. And I was working as Dr. Hudson's research assistant then and was fortunate enough to accompany him there for a year. And during that year, I also got to travel around the world with him. We went to uh, five Southeast Asian nations and to three countries in the Gulf. And that's just the trips he took me on. And wherever we go, I... It, uh, witnessed people telling him how influential he has been. And I heard him called the father of Middle East studies and the dean of Middle East studies. And, and it's, it's true, he's, he's really um, been such an influence in this field that has really expanded. And so in return for all those trips that I got to go on, um, now we bring him to Cleveland, Ohio. So I will let him come up here. And thank you so much again for being here. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for the invitation to come to Cleveland. Uh, uh, thanks to Rana for uh, a, a very flattering, but, but I must say excessive uh, introduction. Uh, Rana has been not only an exemplary student, although she's still mad at me because I gave her the only A minus that, that she had received, and uh, a, a superb research assistant, both at Georgetown and at Singapore, and uh, even though she has come back to pursue her own PhD at Northwestern, uh, I've still managed uh, to buy a little bit of her time uh, as my research assistant uh, to this very day, and it's been really wonderful to, to have that kind of uh, backup, especially uh, if you are an absent-minded professor, uh, and I, I'm afraid I am. Uh, it's a, it, 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 before I get into what I think is unfortunately rather a depressing topic uh, tonight, uh, I would like to uh, thank the Cleveland Council on World Affairs. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Abu Rana, uh, Dr. Wael Khoury, the father of Rana, uh, and uh, Ambassador Heather Hodges for their kind invitation, and also for the staff of the council, which has made this visit uh, so far extremely enjoyable. Not only were they able to uh, get me on another flight early out of Washington, yesterday because of the incoming snowstorm in Washington, which might have complicated things, but they've also been uh, so uh, kind and helpful here. And now that I've had a, a chance 
uh, to get a little bit of, uh, of a taste of Cleveland. I am so impressed, and I think I'll stay a few days longer, if you don't mind. Uh, and I, I <laughs> when, you, when you realize, as I, I we just, uh, Rana just took me to the Cleveland uh, Art Museum. Uh, we've been to the West Side Market. Uh, uh, I've had a look around, uh, had a glimpse of the Rock and Roll Museum, and so on. And I am so uh, impressed with, with, uh, with, with Cleveland in so many ways. And I will always, of course, uh, treasure the uh, recordings of the Cleveland Orchestra, which uh, is world class, as, as, as you all know. So thank you very much for that. Um, let me begin with, with, with kind of a, an overview and summary of what I want to elaborate on uh, subsequently. We were talking about Arab politics uh, after the uprisings, still searching for legitimacy. Legitimacy is the theme of, of my inquiry and, and of this uh, talk, and it goes back to some of my earliest work on the comparative politics of the Arab world, uh, and uh, in particular the book that Rana mentioned, which was called Arab Politics, The Search for Legitimacy. That came out in 1977. And it has been uh, a challenge since then uh, since the Arab uprisings that began at the beginning of 2011 to reconsider the question of legitimacy. So let me, uh, first of all, just give you a kind of overview and then I'll go into some of the, what I would call the, the, the uh, sinews or the muscles of legitimacy and, and why the search for legitimacy in the Arab world still goes on and is still, uh, regrettably, largely unfulfilled. So the popular uprisings across the Arab world that began in 2011 uh, have not yet produced either democracy or stability. And the fundamental problem is, in my opinion, is the lack of legitimacy of the existing order, which until recently has been managed by regimes largely relying on an oversized security, military apparatus, and in some of the smaller oil-rich kingdoms, generous welfare programs, because they have the money to, to, to